Well, as in you know, as 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 in most matters, uh, uh, there there's some good news and some bad news. Um, the good news is is that the United States does have a number uh, of important uh, relative advantages. We are the youngest of the developed countries today, and thanks to a um, relatively higher uh, fertility rate, we're, we're nearly at the replacement level with a fertility rate of 2.0, uh, and to substantial net immigration, we'll be the youngest country by a uh, developed country by an even wider margin uh, in the year 2020, 2030, 2040. Um, uh, when the median age of Europe uh, will be 50 in the year 2035, 2040, the median age of the United States will still be uh, relatively spry, 39. Mm -hmm. um, we, we have uh, uh, more flexible labor markets than, than most developed countries. We have broad and deep capital markets. Uh, we also have a relatively inexpensive uh, uh, social security system, um, which gives us a, a, a leg up. Um, I Italy. Uh, Germany uh, and a number of other European countries spend more on public pensions for the elderly today, already, uh, before the ramp up um, with the age wave than we'll be spending in the year 2030 after the last of the baby boomers have retired. Um, that said, uh, uh, we don't age as much as the rest of the developed world, but we do age very rapidly. Um, this is because of the baby boom pig in the python, which, which isn't uh, the, the, the cause of the aging of the population, but influences the timing uh, 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 of it. The, baby, the, the middle aging of the baby boom has been slowing uh, the aging of the population for the past 25 years. The elder share in the United States has been flat at 12 to 13 percent. Um, but as boomers start uh, turning 65, uh, in 2010, 2011, um, that share skyrockets to 20, 21 percent uh, within just uh, uh, two decades. Um, so and, 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 and at times, uh, it, it, it isn't the level uh, that matters as much um, as the rate of change. Uh, and the United States is a country which is uh, accustomed to uh, relatively low tax levels, to a relatively small public sector. Um, there's going to be a, a great deal uh, of pressure um, um, on, on public budgets and it's going to ramp up very quickly. I mentioned that we have a relative advantage on Social Security uh, on, on the pension side, a relative cost advantage. Um, but of course, uh, it leans just the other way on the health care side. We have the most uh, uh, lavishly expensive health care system. Uh, in the world, we spend about twice per capita what the next runner-up Switzerland does. Um, and most of that, we don't have national health care in the United States, but we do have national health care for people age 65 and over. So almost all of that cost shows up in public budgets. We should be preparing for this challenge today uh, uh, with high uh, private and public sector savings rates, um, but that's not the case. Uh, uh, household savings uh, hovers around uh, zero uh, in the United States today and we're running, running widening fiscal deficits um, rather than surpluses to prepare for the fiscal gauntlet ahead. Um, so th th there, there is a, uh, a chance um, if we don't somehow manage to overcome gridlock uh, that despite these relative advantages uh, we could end up uh, in little better shape fiscally or economically than some of the uh, uh, faster aging and apparently more challenged uh, economies of Europe um, and Japan. So a cautionary note.